I hope you like the haircut. <laughs> 50 quid donation for this, so if you want it all off, a little bit more please. Thank you. Um, so my life, my testament, um, great childhood, great life, summer holidays, skiing holidays, very middle class, lovely, fantastic time. Went to university, got me a degree, it was only a 2-1, I'm not as clever as some of you people, with first and that. Met the ex-wife, two wonderful kids, life was fantastic. Um, then one day it all fell apart. Um, and that's when the demon took over. Self-medicated, drinking to sleep. And there'll be people in here probably won't admit that they've ever done that or admit that they do it. I will, and you will all have friends and family that have done that or are doing that under the radar. The only thing I found was, I'm a man, I can get over this, I can do this. So last August, I realised I couldn't do it by myself. Um, metal, bold, annoying little fella, um, Stu Clark, and he brought me here. And it was last August I came here, and I was crying out for help, really crying out in the bottom of my heart. But I remember saying to Stu, "Don't do something this God rush like. Don't do it." I don't believe in that, and I went to Ali's house and I was coming up with every excuse in the world to not seek help. Um, came to church and the family didn't replace the family I lost, it just extended the family. Um, found Jesus, I uh, questioned everything going, had meetings with Adam, meetings with Ali, various other people with Graham. So I said, what's all this about, mate? Then eventually, um, it was about three months ago at Freedom in Christ. I was doing the steps there. And the most amazing thing happened to me on that day. I um, was doing the step ceremony. And I heard three words when we were praying. And it was just, I got you. <laughs> I got you, yeah. repetitive, and I was just, what's going on here, any idea? Went outside, are you talking to me, you man up there? And it just kept going all day long, I got you, I got you. So that's when I made the decision to get baptised, and I was like, okay, when, where? And I've always been in love with Holy Island. If anyone's never been, you're missing it. Yeah. Just said, right, okay, I'm going to do it. And Yesterday morning I was having doubts. Is this real? Is this going on? Uh, I went to St. Mary's Church and had a prayer. And two of the guys had, during the week said they wanted to be baptised. And I heard both their stories over that week. And I realised that um, Jesus' extreme love. It's not just love that you've got for other people, family, friends your kids or anything like that. This way, way, way beyond that. Yeah. These guys have got stories that I tell you what. We were weeping mm -hmm. two or three days when we heard these stories. I'll tell you a little bit about one guy. Um, his brother put a prayer note on the Holy Island 12 years ago for him to come back from Afghanistan. Nine years ago, Friday gone, he was um, blown up by an IED, and five of his friends died. <clears throat> and he was on the walk with us guys. Um, and I was with him on Thursday night, and we prayed for the guys that set that bomb. Yeah. Which is quite moving when we pray for that extreme, extreme love and grace that he's found and that I've found. So yesterday was quite emotional, getting baptised, those were there, Adam, lovely Hannah, coming up, the Nichols were there, the trees were there. But it was with those people and with Christ's extreme love that I felt yesterday. Yeah. They really did hit the nail on the head. And that's me.